We're on worksheet three, and this is part two of it. I've already drawn in the base of the shape. Now I'm gonna to work to draw in the diamond section on top. For the base, we had two vanishing points. We had vanishing point one and vanishing point two. For this question, we're gonna need a third vanishing point. The sides of the diamond are not parallel to either this side or this side, meaning I can't use those vanishing points. So I'm going to have to set up a different set of vanishing points. I'll highlight them in green here. This side of the diamond is parallel to this side of the diamond. So because those lines are parallel and horizontal, so the lines are horizontal and they're parallel to each other, they both will travel to one vanishing point. So that on my little 3D view is this, this line and the line up here. So those lines in reality are all parallel to each other and they're all horizontal. And I see they're parallel to each other when I check them in plan. And I know the lines are horizontal from the elevation. Here's those lines in elevation. So I know they're horizontal. So I set up a new vanishing point. To do that, it's the exact same process we has, as we had before. To set a vanishing point up for this line, I came parallel from the spectator. To set up a vanishing point for this line, I come parallel to the spectator. Same thing for the green lines. If I want to set up a third vanishing point, I go parallel to those lines from the spectator. So parallel from the spectator. And that gives me vanishing point three, VP3. I need to find that vanishing point in my perspective view also. So I just bring it down again, same parallel to the CVL line. And that has set up a new vanishing point, VP3. And it's that vanishing point I'm gonna to use to do the question. In the first part of the question, we had to extend on this side to hit the picture plane, and then we measure the height of it at that point. We're gonna to have to do exactly the same thing here. So I have to extend on this side to hit the picture plane. It's at this point I can measure. So I'll bring that down to the ground line. So down parallel. And it's from this point up, I can measure the height of those lines. Height of the first line is here in elevation. So that's the bottom point I want. And we take the top point from X, Y line up, which is the ground. We have our top point. So I've got my bottom point and top point. And just as I set it up, I have to vanish those to vanishing point three. This is the direction of those lines to vanishing point three. So when I take my two lines, I vanish to vanishing point three. Same setup, I need to find the start of the line and the end of the line. So I join those to the spectator. So join the end to the spectator and bring it down. And that would give me the first line. Join to the spectator again and take that point down. And that would give me the back corner. So that has given me this surface here. I'll darken it in now. And the principle is exactly the same as we did for the front section. We extended the surface to hit the picture plane, brought it down to the ground and measured the heights and we got our two heights vanish to our vanishing point. So just that it's a vanishing point three makes no difference. 
As I said earlier, this side is parallel to this side. We can see it in plan. So I can do the exact same principle here. I can extend this line on, with this surface on, to hit the picture plane. Again, bring that down and measure the height. So from my ground up, I can measure the height. Height of my line in elevation is here. So that's the bottom line. Height of my line in elevation for the top is there. So I've taken my two heights. And again, my direction is in the direction of vanishing point 3. So vanish to vanishing point 3. And once again, the start and the end of the line. Join to the spectator and take it down. that gives me the first line. Here's the first line. I'm not going to see all of the next line, but I'll bring it down in here. Join to the spectator. And take it down. So the back line, this will be a broken line I'll put it in. Here's my back line. Now I've just zoomed in slightly so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. We extended on our surface, brought it down and we measured our heights from the ground. Lower height, upper height and they vanished to vanishing point 3. We took our start line down and brought it down to find the line and it joins in between the two took our end line, end point, sorry, down and we find the two points in the line. And we said that was our front surface. Back surface in the same process. Extended it down to the ground line, measured off the same heights. Those are the same two heights as we had over here because the same, they're the same height and elevation. Vanish to vanishing point three, Vanish to vanish point three. The two points on the line, take the first point down and we find it here. Second point or the end point down and we find it here. And I drew that as a broken line because we can't actually see it. But what it does give me is the top four points on the diamond. So there are my four points on the diamond. And all we have to do is just join those up. So there's the top surface of the diamond, same on the bottom. We have the bottom four points on the diamond. And all of a sudden now it should make a little bit more sense as to what it looks like. Fill in the back corners or the back edges and we find our surface. And that's the question done.